Okay, so these were the linear feedback registers that are in every GPS satellite, but each satellite is different. It's actually transmitting a different sequence, even though it has the same two shift registers in it. And what determines the sequence is a, a unique combination of G1 and pieces from the inside of G2. And when you do this, um, it's called a, a gold code. And so let me just write the title here. So the thing I'm going to talk about now are the gold codes in the GPS satellites. All right, so if I wanted to make the gold code for satellite number one, what I would do is I would take this G1 and I would XOR it with a particular combination of what are called taps from G2. So you can look this up for, for satellite number one. You need to take the, uh, the XOR of bits number two and six. So let me, let me do that. So bits number two and six, I'll, I'll drag a line from number two. I'll drag a line from number six. And that gets XORed with G1. And this becomes what's called the CA code for, for satellite number one. For satellite number two, again, you just have to look this up. Um, you, take, you take G1 again, the gold code for G1. And you XOR it with numbers three and seven. So let me draw another XOR gate here. So number three and number seven. Oops, should have left myself more room here. Yeah. Let me three and seven. That gets XORed with G1. That becomes the CA code, carrier acquisition code for satellite number two. So this is. Um, let's see numbers three, number three, oops, number three and number seven, or what's called space vehicle two, and numbers two, number two and number six, or space vehicle one. Okay, so if you find the document that describes a GPS system. Uh, officially called NAVSTAR, Global Positioning System. Uh, on page 23, at least of this version, there's a table of code phase assignments. And this is the carrier acquisition code. And it says that you should take for satellite or space vehicle ID number one, you take uh, the XOR of numbers two and six, for space vehicle number two, you take the XOR of three and seven, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They have a whole table here. Table continues. Um, all the way up to 37 here with some redundancies. So it says 34 and 37 are common. That means they're the same, the same actual code comes out. So it's not used twice. Um, so the difference between the space vehicle number and the GPS pseudo random number uh, starts to diverge here. So space vehicles only go up to 32. There are 32 possible space vehicles. Um, the ones down here are used for ground, ground operations to communicate back with the satellite. So uh, this is the list, and I'll show you how this is used in a second. All right, so what's, what's important about these, these gold codes that are constructed from XORs of one linear feedback shift register with taps from another? Well, they have small cross-correlation with each other. Again, it's, it's not quite zero cross-correlation, but quite small. And um, they, they also have small autocorrelation with themselves, although again, it's not quite as good as the, the uh, linear feedback shift registers themselves. What this means is that if you're getting signals from different satellites that are all overlapping, you can pick out the different satellites by correlating, uh, correlating each satellite's code against the signal you're getting. And when you see a big, a big correlation, that means you're, you're seeing a particular satellite. All right, so how did I implement this in GNU Radio? We're actually going to go out and, and look at satellites, so I have to implement these, these gold codes. Well, I started out with the same 
same flow graph with my constant source of zero fed into the same two scramblers. But unfortunately, I can't get inside of the shift register that's inside of these scramblers. And so what I can do is I can just make my own version of the shift register with these delay lines. And anything that comes out of here is just going to go into this set of, of, uh, of registers here and, uh, and get delayed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units. And so uh, the output of this last delay is still G1. It's just a slightly delayed version of G1. And the output of this last delay is still G2, which is a slightly delayed version of G2. But now I can actually pluck off different, different taps from G2 and, and XOR them together. So for space vehicle one, I'm plucking off taps two here from the output of two and six. And I'm XORing that with, with uh, the output of, of G1 here. And for space vehicle two, I'm picking off taps three and seven and XORing it with the output of, of G1. And again, I can plot that. I can plot the CA codes. And then what I'm going to do next is plot a bunch of correlations between things using the same sort of uh, correlation sequence here. So let me play that. All right, so now I have one cycle of G1 and one cycle of G2. So the blue and red are exactly what they were before, except delayed by a little bit. Uh, now, the green and the black are the gold codes or the CA codes for satellites number one and two. Again, all these look like pretty random sequences of zeros and ones, but they do have some nice correlation properties. So the first plot is the same plot we had last time, which is the autocorrelation of G1 with itself. Um, the next plot is the cross correlation between G1 and G2. Again, it doesn't quite go as high and has a lot of zeros. Uh, this is the autocorrelation of space vehicle one's CA uh, carrier acquisition gold code with itself. So again, when you're shifting by nothing, you get this nice peak at uh, 1,023 here. And then you get, it's not all negative one. It's not quite as nice as the linear field of shift register itself. But uh, most of the correlations are zero. And occasionally, you get a little bit high, a little bit low. But there's definitely a, a large correlation when, it's, when you uh, have exactly zero circular shift. And finally, I'm showing the cross correlation between uh, space vehicle one and space vehicle two. And again, there are some peaks here, but it's mostly zeros and the peaks never get nearly as high as uh, if you were correlating against itself. So those are some nice correlation properties of these CA codes. And let me talk about what signal the GPS satellites actually transmit. And there are many different types of signals that they transmit for many different purposes. Some are uh, more accurate, some are more encrypted. But the, the simplest one that is often uh, acquired first is this thing called the carrier acquisition signal, CA signal. And I talked about how each GPS satellite is assigned a unique sequence of 1,023 uh, bits, or sometimes called chips. I'll say why in a second. Um, and, that, and I sort of hinted that the satellite transmit that. But what, what does that mean? Well, the satellites also want to transmit data down. They basically say, you know, I'm satellite such and such. Uh, my orbital parameters are this and that and the other. Um, I think the time is this. And by the way, here are all the orbital parameters of all the other satellites in the constellation so that you can have an easier time finding them. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of information that comes down. And the way it works is the information is, is quite terse. And the actual satellites transmit bits, they transmit information at 100 bits of, of data per second. So quite slow in terms of the actual data. Now, it takes a long time to get all this information, even from a single satellite. Um, but it doesn't just transmit these bits directly. It, it does it in what's going to seem like a very inefficient scheme, but that, that helps us uh, pick the satellites out above the noise and do a lot of this timing recovery, which is important for the GPS system. So uh, each bit, each bit turns into either, so, so if the bit is a zero, it'll turn into 10 copies of uh, that 
that satellite's CA code sequence. So the CA code is 1023 long. And if the thing wants to transmit a zero, it'll actually do those 1023 bits repeated 10 times. If it wants to transmit a one, it'll do 10 copies of inverse of that code. So um, if we ask how many, so this is these are called bits of data, the little uh, code snippets are sometimes called chips. We can ask how many chips come out per second. So it's 100 bits times 10, because it does 10 copies of each code twice, times 1023, which is how fast this, uh, you know, the length of each of each sequence. So this is going to be uh, this is bits per second. So if I multiply this out, this is going to be 10, 23, 0, 0, 0 hertz, or at about 1.023 megahertz, it will transmit a new chip. It'll transmit a new item in this code, which is either um, the original code or the inverted version of that, depending on whether at that moment it's transmitting a zero or a one. Okay, now what scheme does it use to transmit this? It uses a very simple scheme that we've already seen. It, it just uses um, the binary phase shift keying with, with no fancy um, pulse shaping. This is sort of our, our very naive version. So for each of these chips that, that are coming out at, at this high rate, um, the GPS satellite will either take the, uh, the carrier signal and transmit it directly, or if the code switches from a zero to a one uh, you know, at this rate, it'll just invert this carrier. So instead of going down, which is what it would do, it would go back up. So that's that's if if one of these chips of code was a was a zero and then a one. Okay, what is the frequency of this carrier? Well, it's about 1.5 gigahertz. So quite fast, but well within the range of the RTL SDR. Um, it is exactly at 1575.5. Megahertz, oops, megahertz. And that is where we'll tune the center frequency of our RTL SDR. And um, we will look at the, the data that comes in and correlate it against a version of this that we generate ourselves to see if we see correlation with different satellites.